So, hello. So, so we're we'll here at the Linaro Connect. So, who, who are you? Uh, my name is Rob Savoy. So, what do you do? I'm a, a tech lead in the tool chain working group and stuff, working primarily on GCC and a bunch of other things, bringing so, up new platforms and stuff. So, can you ask questions? <sighs> okay. okay. Sure. So, Rob, uh, you mentioned earlier something that really caught my attention. You've been working on okay. GCC since when? Uh, since 1987. <laughs> 1987. Um, wow. And I've been working on GCC pretty much almost, not quite full time, but pretty often since. That's pretty awesome. And I've written a lot of other packages. And the, the tool chain is more than just GCC. Uh -huh. So I also wrote um, Deji GNU, which is the testing framework for the GNU tool chain. I wrote libgloss, which is the board support package. New lib, which is one of the C libraries we use for bare metal. Um, lots of GDB backends, lots of ARM work, stuff like that. I kind of bounce. You know, when you work on it for a long time, you bounce in different parts of it to keep interesting. One thing you mentioned earlier is you actually worked on ARM for a very long time. Uh, yeah, I was on the team that did the original GCC port to the ARM. Wow. <laughs> a long time ago. What's the significance of that? I mean, let's, let's assume people don't know what GCC is. How significant is it that GCC got ported to ARM platform? So, you know, ARM has its own compiler, which is slightly different, but GCC is free. So mm -hmm. you guys aren't old enough to remember when compilers cost nine and $10,000 per engineer seat. And so back like when I worked at Cygnus Support, we were the original GCC developers, um, we said these buttons, um, license managers suck. So <laughs> we're, what the advantage of using GCC is that it was a pretty good quality compiler that also is freely available. So a lot of people that were you know, wanting to program hardware and start startups and didn't have huge budgets could instantly have tool chains for building ARM-based hardware, whereas without GCC, they would have to put up $10,000 per engineer. Um, I mean, it's, it was, used to be a real mess in those days and stuff like that. I remember now, now we still have some of that situation because we have the optimized Intel compiler. Yeah, we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Portland Group. It's actually an extremely good code producing compiler, but it's not free. <laughs> so what do you do here at uh, Now Connect So in general? A little bit of everything. Um, I'm basically a tech lead of what we call support and maintenance. So currently I've been doing a lot of work on automating tool chain builds for everybody else. Um, sort of automated regression testing mixed with benchmarking and verification and stuff like that. Because we need good ways to prove that we're improving everything. And a lot of times um, it's hard to know if you've broken anything too. And since I wrote most of the testing framework, I've currently been working a lot on improving our ability to test and analyze what we're doing to make it easier for all the other developers and stuff. How do we instill in other developers the need to test first and write code later? So it's funny, because a long time ago, a lot of developers didn't believe in testing. Oh, that's what you hire some guy out of high school to do, right? But people quickly realized with complicated software that you can't really tell if you broke or didn't do anything. And so most developers um, over time have realized that testing makes their life easier. And so nowadays, like in the GCC team, you have a bug, you make a test case for it, it goes in the test suite and you make sure it never breaks again. Because many of us would have regressions that we had no way to test a long time ago. And now it's a lot better. Like when we do an average GCC release, we sometimes are running six million test cases per release, per target, you know, things like that. And it just gives us a lot more confidence that we're actually making improvements and stuff. And then what we're working on now is also shifting into performance testing as well as just regression testing. Um, because, you know, we need good quality tools or, you know, your kernel breaks or, you know, your media player has skips or all these silly things that bad compilers can do. Without testing, it's so complicated. You would, no human being could make sure they're actually doing the right job. And that's a good quote. Without testing, no human being could actually be sure that they're doing a good job. Yeah. So one of the things you actually did mention that you keep mentioning very, very surface, so to speak, but you mentioned that you have worked at C Cygnus, yep. which is known for what? For Sigwin, right? So I started the Sigwin project. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long story. I was forced to work on Windows, and like, there's no way I'm going to use Visual Studio. Thank so you I went to my management and said, hey, hey, I want to put GCC to Windows. They're like, okay. <laughs> so we did. <laughs> um, I've been using Sigwin for so long. All right. Great so I wrote the first five lines of code. <laughs> no, that's amazing, though. It, yeah. it is truly an honor speaking with you. Um, so, you said that you, you obviously needed Sigwin for because you needed something for yourself. You were you were faced you were forced to be using Windows, and you probably didn't like SFU too much. So, 
part of the problem was we used to do this thing we still do called Canadian crosses, which is on a Unix machine. Mm -hmm. I build a cross compiler mm -hmm. that will run on Windows and produce code for a third machine. Oh, yeah, yeah. That infrastructure is rather complicated and convoluted. And so to reduce the difficulties of that, I'm like, I just want to host native on Windows. It turned out to be a huge multi-year project, of course. Yes. But at the time, that was it. It turned out to be... I mean, Sigmund turned into an entire POSIX emulation layer with complete job control and everything else now. And now it's kind of fun because sometimes when I was consulting, I'd visit customers and all the guys on Windows machines that have little bash windows open on their terminals as I'd walk to the engineering department. It's very fun. <laughs> I'm going to show you something funny. <laughs> but um, so speaking of uh, Sigmund and GCC, uh, how do you determine what features to add to GCC these days? So. To be honest, a lot of the features are tracking new standards, mm -hmm. and often a lot of features are um, suggested and asked for us to implement by you know member companies, customers, and people like that. You, know, you have a new processor, so of course you have to port it to like Arch 64. We're doing a lot of work on 64-bit ARM support. Um, that's kind of not a feature, but in a sense, without that port, it won't actually happen. But mm -hmm. sometimes people say things like, you know, like a long time ago, G C++ did not have namespace support. Mm -hmm. or template support, believe it or not. So we added that because we wanted it to be more standards compliant. These days, I mean, a long time ago, GCC was not real standards compliant, but these days it's pretty much compatible with all the current standards and pretty much par with the sort of proprietary compilers. So why do people still continue to develop proprietary compilers? What do you think? So some people prefer that. They have some belief that the proprietary commercially produced compilers are different. The other big thing is a lot of those compilers are produced by the same people designing the processors, so they have knowledge that those of us in the GCC community don't have, nor can get. <laughs> so this is actually Sigwin running on Windows Azure in the cloud. That's hilarious. No, just give me, give me a second. It hasn't launched yet. Mm. We never said it was fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it is, fun. it is funny to demo it on, a, on an iPad, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where, we are, that's where we're headed. We have um, this, huge uh, this huge shift happening from x86 into ARM. Yeah. So how is uh, the GCC project adapting to these rapidly escalating needs of huge growth in, uh, in, ARM's, in ARM's ARM race? So, you know, I'll be honest. While Lenaro does a lot of work on ARM, so does ARM also supplies you know, patches to us and other people using the ARM. And so kind of what we're doing is, is, you know, what we're working on now is making sure that we can test everything, quality verification for our own work as well as other people's. We have a lot of people now working on ARM support. I mean, if you look at Lenaro, you look at ARM, and you look at Samsung and a lot of the other companies and stuff, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of people now working on the tool chain for ARM. And while ARM has its own compiler, most everybody else is using GCC running on Linux on ARM. <laughs> Fascinating. So what are the um, top three challenges that you see for the next couple of years? For GCC? For GCC, Lenaro in general, um, um, how's it end, specifically on the ARM platform? You know, keeping up with new hardware. Unlike a lot of other platforms, you know, MIPS and Intel architectures mm -hmm. that don't, they change a lot, but they have a lot of, of backward compatibility and stuff. ARM is designed for a very different purpose, right? It's much more embedded. Mm -hmm. And so I think we're going to be busy constantly keeping the tool chains and the compilers and the kernels working for all their newer versions of the processors. I mean, the ARM chips coming out now are amazing compared to the ones even five years ago and things. So I think we're going to be very, very busy just making sure that as people come up with new silicon and hardware that the tools that they need to use are as up to date and as efficient and as you know, quality as they can possibly do. I'm not sure if our job will ever end. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's job security. Absolutely it is. So Nicholas, do you have any more questions? I uh, just want to say, uh, could you help? Uh, could you help us find some other guys to talk on video? I can try. <laughs> um, anything in particular?